It's like okay. there's like a fat, like freshly baked, like chicken. And it's <laughs> dank and it smells good. It's on the table and everyone's just walking by. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting and there's like this bomb ass chicken. You can say like a ice cream, like white chicken. And I'm like, <laughs> anyone seen this? So I've been a big fan of H3H3 H3 production for many years now. And I started reacting to a lot of couples on this YouTube channel here. And I thought, dang, why not react to my favorite YouTube couple, Ethan and Neela? And the funny thing is I never actually watched the How We Met at the Holocaust Museum story. I like watched a minute of it and I was like, oh, I don't wanna see this but I never actually ended up watching it. So it's a perfect opportunity for me to react to Ethan and Hila, 2007, how we met at the Holocaust Museum. Let's do it, Hila Kleiners. When I first met Hila, I was in a pretty dark place. I had an anxiety disorder and socializing was extremely difficult for me. This, is so this story cute. is about the one brave moment I had in the midst of all my anxiety that changed my life forever. Well, like I said, me and Ela's life has been pretty bizarre, and the way we met is no exception. <laughs> because me and Ela met at the Holocaust Museum. I had no idea what, what it was going to be. It was just like a free vacation around Israel with some American tourists. American cuties. <laughs> some beanie slinging American hotties. Some <laughs> thick boys. Did they no. tell you about the thick boys? No. Did they mention that? <laughs> There's this girl that is flipping tall and beautiful. And she's got these huge blue eyes. And I was like, what? And she's got like black hair that like is in a cr crazy contrast to her blue eyes. And I'm, I'm there like... I'm there, like, in the corner, like, minding my own business, and I'm like, has anyone seen this shit? Has anyone seen this shit? Right? No. I was like, damn, has anyone seen this shit? Or is I'm looking around like... <laughs> I was probably at my fattest point then. I felt, like, at my most all-time unattractive ever, right? I just felt, like, compelled to to try to approach her and speak to her. Because I'm sitting here like, no one else is like looking at this. And I'm like, you guys seeing this or what? It's like there's like a fat, like freshly baked, like chicken. And it's dank and it smells good. It's on the table and everyone's just walking by. And, I, and I'm sitting and there's like this bomb ass chicken. You can say like that. Ice cream, like white chicken. And I'm like, anyone seen this? And everyone's walking by like they don't smell it and shit. And I'm like, no one wants to bite of this? <laughs> kind of a strange analogy, but it works for me. And I just felt like I need to talk to this girl. Um, there's something about her. I just, you had this cool thing where you were kind of like an outsider. You were quiet. That's what I was going to say. I, I feel like you were also kind of an outsider. Yeah. That's why we both kind of like. Sense, sense that outsider <laughs> yeah outsider we're club. that cool ass kids breakfast club a club mm. of two people who don't belong anywhere that's true you know that's <laughs> uh, that's so true i feel i do feel like that still yeah. to this day so what i'm getting is they were both able to recognize each other's vibes that they were both kind of the outcasts they were both kind of the quiet ones that were keeping to themselves and they connected from that but how they actually met is what we're gonna learn i'm guessing the okay. first day we were in jerusalem you guys joined and yeah we were on our way to the to the holocaust museum mm -hmm. in jerusalem yeah and then i remember at the at the museum was the first time we like caught eyes caught eyes or like what up no i i had i've been i was watching you like <laughs> Fresh baked chicken. I was like, oh, I don't stop. like being a chicken. With I was like, chicken. Ugh. Yeah. We were eating like pizzas outside. Yeah, which was like sealed the fate. We were eating like Papa John <laughs> pizzas outside the Holocaust Museum, and I think that was the first time we caught eyes. And I was like, I was looking at her like, okay, no more chicken. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we went into the Holocaust Museum, and we're like, um, trying to peep that out, trying to get the experience and stuff. And I, I didn't know what compelled me, but. I felt like that was an appropriate time to approach you. Mm. Hmm. 
something about the Holocaust Museum <laughs> was just like this. This is <laughs> this appropriate. Is, yeah, this is the right time to say what up. Yep. But the interesting thing that we find out is that Ela was already interested in Ethan because she said he she noticed him already. She noticed that they were both kind of outsiders, so she was already kind of interested in him, which is cool to know. To her, I said something like, "How about all these Jews? Huh? Am I right?" Really? I don't remember. No, I didn't. I, said, I think I said something like, they had it coming, don't you think? Something like that? No, I didn't say anything like that. Oh, my Lord. I wonder if you would have laughed, though. They had it coming, don't you think? But I, I was compelled. I had to talk to her. And we, we started talking, and just like, you know, it was kind of just like chummy. Very chummy. What's chummy? Like old friends, right? You chum, right? You chummed? We chummed. We chummed, hmm. apparently. We definitely chummed. <laughs> I remember the first time like I pushed myself to come say hi to you, and I was so nervous. I was so anxious about it, and I had like thought about what I would say or how I would approach you, and I was, and I was so in my head. This is so huge that Ethan is talking about this because this is what everybody feels before they go talk to anybody really for the first time, let alone somebody that they're interested in. Um, so I'm so glad that Ethan is telling this story. Everything was making it way worse, but I knew just like the same thing when I was like, I have to do this trip. No matter how bad I feel, no matter how I don't want to take the easy route and just not do it, I have to do this. I have to do this. I had the same mentality when I saw mm. you there. I was like, I don't want to do this. It's extremely uncomfortable, but I have to do this. Mm. And I went and, you know, I felt horrible. It was super scary. And I just went up to him and I was just like, hey, dude, what up? You know? I'm Ethan, whatever, yeah, right? It's, it's funny to think that something can be so like terrifying in your head where I was probably just as nervous as mm. you were to, to yeah. talk to anyone, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's funny how you build up in your head. I remember I bought you a guitar. It's so, 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 so true. Uh, that feeling of that super intense anxiety of going up to somebody and thinking you look so stupid, when in reality, you probably look just like, Meh. It's funny because I remember a friend was telling me like, whenever you watch a scary movie and on the inside, you're like freaking out. But if any, if you watch anybody that watches a scary movie, they're just, they're just kind of like relaxed most of the time. And it's the same thing about feeling that anxiety. And that's what made me learn when I go up to people that I'm interested in meeting, I know I have the anxiety on the inside, but I just let it happen and then go anyway. So I'll be talking to somebody and I might have anxiety, but I'm just like, well, whatever. I have anxiety, whatever. My purpose, my interest in actually meeting people and making friends and building relationships is more important. So I just don't care anymore. I used to focus so hard on anxiety when now I'm just like, eh, the anxiety is there, whatever. It's been there for 10 years. It's been there for all my life. So I'm just gonna go and do what I wanted to do anyway while just holding the anxiety. And um, sometimes it's a lot stronger than others for whatever reason that may be. Um, but as long as I'm focused on the present moment, focused on my purpose, that really helps the anxiety just kind of flutter away. Now, if you try to fight the anxiety, that's different. That's when you start getting all freaky but just allow the anxiety to be there. Yeah, it's really intense. It's really uh, just whatever. I'm just gonna move my legs. Literally, I just say, you feel the anxiety, it doesn't matter. Just move your legs to the person that you wanna do, talk to. Don't say, oh, I'm gonna fight you and I'm gonna say, no, I am not going to feel you anxiety. I'm gonna do what I wanna do anyway. No, just say, I feel the anxiety, yeah, I have it. And I'm going to just move my legs over to the person that I want to talk to. I used to play guitar for you all the time. You did. We used to talk on Skype and at, at night I would like, I would talk to Ethan until like really late and my parents would always freak out like, what are you doing there? And sometimes they would play guitar and I'd just fall asleep with my <coughs> headphones on. Aww. Dude, we used to make some, some sick ass music for you. <laughs> I used to play guitar for the, I guess the only reason was to meet a girl because the moment that me, Ela moved in with me, I stopped playing guitar and I haven't played since. <laughs> That's true. I was like, mission accomplished, boy. <laughs> I get to retire this guitar forever. There's this one song that I wrote for you. And I back think it's when actually you're in a really good song. It's probably the only good song I ever made. <laughs> uh, but I used to play for you all the time on Skype. It's 
actually pretty good. Kind of reminds me of Daniel Johnson. Is Ethan a secret indie king? Is like, I had two opportunities to say, this makes me very uncomfortable. I'm gonna take the easy escape to avoid putting myself through this really uncomfortable situation. The first one was going all together because I had generalized anxiety disorder and I couldn't bear these social interactions like this. It was so hard on me. And the second one, just as hard, was just approaching you to begin with. Mm -hmm. And those two, these two things that I really didn't want to do, but I forced myself to do, changed the course of my life, like completely and forever. And in my life since then, like I, I always look at these opportunities of things that I don't want to do. What is it worth these moments of awkwardness, of uncertainty, of discomfort for the potential that it holds? It sounds obvious, but how many mm -hmm. times in your life, and in mine too, I've done it so many times, where you would rather take the easy, comfortable route than be confronted with some kind of change or friction or challenge to yourself? Always take it, always take it. My life has changed completely and for the better a million times over god i don't even know where i would be <laughs> if we never met like i'm yeah. i'm dead serious you have been nothing you have been a tsunami of good fortune in my life Aww. like ever since i met you my life has taken a turn for like the best and i'm and i swear to god when i met you well you guys saw where we are with the red pepper i was waiting table. there was no prospects and from the moment like our, we were writing books, <laughs> we were making videos, I was writing songs, like all of a sudden, like Aww. my just taking the chance to come and say hi to you, like changed the course of my life. And seriously, it's, it's a lesson that I've always held. Oh my God, it's so cute. Man, it's it's so obvious how much Ethan really cares for Ela. And I mean, they're not like the most affectionate couple in the world, but Ethan makes sure to show that he really cares for Ela and that he's attracted to Ela and that Ela is so special to him. Um so often in the videos and it's not happening at all times where he's like trying to show it off but it's enough to show that he really does care it's nice to see that from a comedian like ethan because ethan is kind of one of those snarky comedians um, and that type of comedy those types of people don't usually show vulnerabilities and show their love and care for people um, and for the people that are special in their life so it's cool to see ethan do that but talking about fears and, and moving towards fears is such an important thing. And for instance, me going in front of the camera all the time right now, I'm anxious as hell just being in front of the camera talking to you guys. Um, let's see what else. Just going forward with everything that I want to in my business over the past 15 years has been a ton of anxiety. Learning to get better with people in my life, ton of anxiety pushing myself through things. But I have learned with anxiety, and like I just said before, it's not about fighting the anxiety. It's about two things. One, learning ways to minimize it, and that's through presence, that's through purpose, and that's through being healthy. And you could learn all about that in my free audiobook down in the description. And number two, it's about allowing the anxiety to be there and just going and doing what you wanted anyway. Saying, yep, I'm feeling anxious right now. I'm feeling totally anxious, but I really want to accomplish what I want to accomplish. I really want to do what I want to do. So I'm just going to go and do it anyway. I'm just going to move my legs, right? So it's like, oh, I feel anxious about making these videos today. Okay, I feel anxious and guess what? I'm setting up the camera, I'm setting up the lights and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna hit record, right? I feel anxious about going and meeting people. So that's okay, I'm gonna feel anxious and I'm gonna go and do those things anyway. I have learned that it's not about fighting the anxiety, it's not about pushing the anxiety away, it's about allowing it to move through you and eventually after you habituate the actions, the practices that you want 
to achieve, the anxiety diminishes further and further down to where it basically goes away. And a lot of my social anxiety is basically gone. I basically don't have social anxiety anymore. Yes, it pops up every now and then, but it's to the point where I have habituated my social interactions so damn much that I hardly feel it anymore. Um, I can't say this enough, guys. When you're feeling anxiety, it's just because you have not done it a lot. Our anxiety is there to try to protect us from things that may potentially, uh, one, kill us, or two, like, reject us from society or from, like, where whatever uh, group we're in at the moment, whatever people are around you at the moment. Um, but it's usually wrong. The anxiety that, uh, that was good for us a long time ago, no longer really serves us as much. So we have to learn how to deal with something that no longer serves us. Um, I consciously know that my anxiety, for the most part, does not serve me. So because of that, I treat it as such. I say, this is just something that I'm feeling right now, but it doesn't serve me, so I am not going to uh, pay attention to it. That's it for today, everybody. I hope you liked this video. I'm a big fan of H3H3. H3. I'm a big Ela Kleiner. I even got my girlfriend a Teddy Fresh sweater, sweatshirt before she even knew who they were. And now she's a big fan of the podcast and we cutely watch it together. We were just watching it yesterday. Um, but that's it. You could watch another video right now.